Peace to the family, peace to the family. Yeah, I just wanted to touch bases and uh, let everybody know that um, everything's cool. Um, you know, I don't know what the fuck happened. It seemed it was a it was it, it was a server, a DDoS type of thing because everything was off. The internet, IG, YouTube. Facebook, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was all down for about 10 minutes just now. I was able to type in the chat room. But um, my YouTube video is still buffering. We had about 800 people in the building, you know what I'm saying? And the information was definitely flowing. So I'm just waiting to see what happens with that show. It's still buffering. But this has happened before. So when you give it some time... They just want to put in it right in the, you know, it, it'll be just to be able to view on the, um, you'll be able to view it on the playback. You feel me? And so enough information, in my humble opinion, was given out tonight. This was a fire live. I don't even think that there's much to be said. I think that we shot our load. Uh, we got on enough information we we unloaded enough information for the family to be able to consume I, I don't believe in information overload especially in these days with this uh this social media paradigm that we're in i don't i don't this is not the vhs days of allow 11 hour lectures where you are being inundated and drowned in high level information i don't think that we're there right now so, based off of the conversations that we were having, the information, the manifesto, um, I'm encouraging the family to definitely go and read the manifesto, go and read White is Right, go and read, uh, he dropped another book, what was that, The Replacements or something? Um, yeah, go and check those things out, you know, because it is going to give you a better understanding about these people and their agendas while the media lies through their fucking teeth and they try to spin the story and they want you to focus your energy on gun control so they could trap you in a Hegelian dialect where this becomes a bipartisan argument and once again the uh, the funnel is to vote for a political candidate you know Donald Trump put a tweet out and he explicitly said that we will not let these two shootings go without taking advantage of them. <laughs> it was like, we got to squeeze the juice out of this rock. Like, we're not going to let these killings take place. And we're not going to get our agendas pushed by way of these shootings. So the political agenda is gun control. The political agenda is to have people who are gun advocates and gun enthusiasts to basically by proxy vote for Trump because once they feel that their gun rights are threatened, that is a death knell for the European because the way that he was able to capture and take America in blood, in bullets, in lead, in smoke, in fire, is through the barrel of his gun. That is a great equalizer. He will not let that go. That is, that's his second penis. He will press a nuclear button before he was to ever let any of his guns go. So you don't even, as a melanated person, with all kind of shit that you need to be worried about, about trying to get from the bottom of the fucking totem pole, you really don't have no horse in that race. You don't got no time, you would benefit by having as many guns around you as possible, like the Matrix. That would be your throughway. And I know that a lot of us are not violent, and I never said to be violent. I just said that you would fare better if you were to have multiple guns around you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nigga, higher security. 
you know, or, you know, invest in um, a private security firm. But we need protection. We in America, like, this is the most militarized nation on the earth. If you think for one minute that I'm going to advocate giving up a box cutter, you know what I mean? Like, I won't even give up a nail. You understand? So, I don't even want to have that conversation. You know? I'm not registered. I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those registered gun carriers. So, I'm not even going to give that none of my energy whatsoever. It's not even worth it. I don't even want to play with them like that. <laughs> like, I'm not going to the NRA meetings. I'm not speaking about the rights of uh, automatic weapons. Like, whatever they... It, it's too late. It's too late. The average American got like three guns. You know, it's not the guns that are necessarily the problem. It's the people behind the guns. It's the rhetoric of Fox News. The manifesto that I just read. The manifesto that a mass shooter left behind. Right? There's other manifestos out there. There's the Christ Church manifesto from Europe, the Norway dude. There's the one who came before him in Europe that killed a whole bunch of people. I believe, was that Sweden? Somewhere. There's the manifesto of Chris. No, we're talking about mass shooters. Um, see, they didn't let you read Chris Downer's manifesto. They hid that. But a Google search, you could find Dylan Roof's manifesto. You could find the killer from El Paso's manifesto. You could find a few manifestos of the alt writers, right? But, um, you know, that thing read like a Fox News segment verbatim. All of the talking points of a Trump rally, they were all in there. So, it just goes to show, you know, the the radicalization of America by the um, the white fragility or the white inferiority uh, complex. You know, it's in full swing, and um, there's not much that. Uh, to be done about it other than you know oh the Virginia Tech had a manifesto too not much could be done don't even waste your time <laughs> you're gonna you're not gonna reform a racist in your lifetime you're not gonna sisters you're not gonna you know sex him you're not gonna sex the racist demon out of him you're not gonna snatch his soul they don't even have a soul to snatch you're not gonna fuck it out of him you're not going to suck it out of him. You're not going to tender it out of him. You know, leave them alone. You understand? Leave them alone. And at this point, we on cold. So if your goofy ass come walking through a festival with your fucking snow king, you know what I mean? Nigga, you're not on cold. Leave them alone. At this point, we need to lock arms like how the Mexicans are about to do. You about to you about to see some shit. Mark my words. This El Paso shit that just went down, where they killed off the Mexicans inside of Walmart. Did you hear the video where the brother was in Walmart and he he was on live and you hear the shots going off, right? But that one right there where they murked a whole bunch of Mexicans by the border in El in in in, in that El Paso, yeah, you you're gonna hear the Mexicans are already talking about. They want smoke because that nigga killed Mexicans in America. They 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 had a conf they had a press conference today. They was like, yo, we, we, we want some we want some retribution. We want some retribution. You're not just gonna be killing no Mexicans. I, they they like we don't care about what's going on in Mexico, nigga. Like you talking about building a wall, but our Mexican Mexican Americans is they, they didn't get killed in a Walmart in Mexico. Mexicans got murked in Walmart in America. And this cocksucker is ranting and raving about building a wall. And then Mexicans, they sm they smart 
they smart enough because their history is still somewhat intact that they know that El Paso, Colorado, uh, Arizona, they know that that shit is Mexico. Like, they know that it was lost in, in a war, right? Let me pull this article up. Look at this shit. Because y'all don't be knowing the history. Like, I ain't gonna blame nobody because, you know. How many Americans know that Donald Trump is the president of Guam? We all grow up learning the official origin story and history of the United States. What we never learn is what this country really is. The greater United States. This is the subject of a new book by historian Daniel Emmervar. How to Hide an Empire. A history of the greater United States. At a time when reckoning with our history is more urgent than ever, Professor Emmervar lays out, through years of research, the true size of the American empire, how it acquired other nations and hundreds of islands as territories it still controls today, and how whiteness drew the borders of all 50 states. As the title reflects, this reality is completely hidden to those of us living on the mainland, and whatever the empire wants hidden should always be brought to light. So when we first started Empire Files a couple of years ago, we were hesitant to right. use the word empire. Too much mayonnaise and it's too long, but you get the point. <laughs> Matter of fact, <clears throat> here you go. Let me show you this. They go to map. Right. Louisiana Purchase, the Texas Annexation in 1845, right? The Spanish Session in 1819, the Mexican Session in 1848, right? The Spanish Session in 1890, these are all the wars or these are all the treaties that created this is the original United this is what I be telling people when they talk about all of that stupid shit. I'm like, bruh, the thirteen colonies is America. I don't know what the fuck else you niggas be talking about. This shit is not America. This is America. The majority of the storyline of the history that you know about, chattel slavery, when all you niggas claim that y'all was slaves and everything, you was all right here. Okay? 13 colonies. You was nowhere... Th th this shit don't got nothing to do with you. You didn't have nothing to do with none of this shit. Because when they got it in 1803, well, you know, you, you had something to do with it afterwards. But... You wasn't involved. I mean, whatever your involvement in Texas before it was annexed to the Americas, you got to figure that out. That history is not in American books like that. Uh, new, what was that? New Spain and all of these, New Granada, all of these places that existed. You know what I'm saying? This don't got nothing to do with chattel slavery whatsoever. This is not chattel slavery. This is not, not the 400... Not that, not the shit the niggas is running with. Not that four hundred year thirteen colony slavery. That's not it. That that wasn't it. So what the fuck were you in? You know what I mean? Like, if you from the West Coast, what's your struggle? You know what I mean? Like, what, who who was your master? Since everybody wants a master these days, niggas don't. I I have yet to hear a nigga really beat on his chest that his family was free. <laughs> You know what I mean? Since everybody want to be owned by somebody, who was your owner? Because it ain't like they annexed half. They did this shit. The, the size of that bitch is double, is triple the size of the 13 colonies. So what you thought they had, what do you think? They had like fucking uh, ready to order slaves. Like when they got the land, it was just a bunch of niggas waiting there to pick cotton. Like, do your research, bro. Do your research or you're going to get washed by these white folk.
who got your research. They got the if they're gonna fucking tsunami niggas if they ever try to run up on them and debate them or talk crazy to them when they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. All that shit that niggas learned in college, black student union, that's all bullshit. All of it. It's all bullshit. Just throw that out. Like half of that shit is propaganda, it's all revised, it's boule, Masonic, black Masonic, black boule, motherfucking uh, Carnegie, Rockefeller controlled history. It's not real. It's not real. It's what got niggas dumbed down in the in, in a fucking stupor the way that they are now. How is it niggas are so dumb in the ninth in the two thousands, but niggas was sharp in the seventeen hundreds when they allegedly couldn't read? Did you read anything from Frederick Douglass or any one of those writers? You you W E B Du Bois. You need three dictionaries to read that shit. Did you ever read anything from the 1800s? So how was it that we couldn't read? We was allegedly they would hang niggas if they read. But when you go and read anything that somebody wrote in the 1800s, melanated or not, the shit is way deeper than anything that you could pull out the library right now. How is that? I remember trying to read um, W.E.B. Du Bois when I was young. I had to say no mas. I put the shit down because it was too intricate. I had to revisit it later on when my when my brain cells were connected a little bit more. So I don't believe the official story that's sold to us. It don't make sense. It doesn't add up. The years, the times, and the dates do not match. It don't. Okay? Niggas fell off when they killed King and motherfucking uh, Malcolm X. And it gave you niggas welfare and a great society. That was our downfall. That's when niggas start spiraling completely. When cocaine, heroin, and motherfucking uh, integration was the order of the day. That's when niggas fell off. And then they gave you Roots, the movie Roots from the CIA operative Alex Haley who was sued, it's on record, who was sued for plagiarism by saying that Kunta Kinte was his ancestor and he took that story from a white man. That's a fact. And then later on down the line, he had to reveal that he was a CIA operative. He's a fucking fed. This is Alex Haley. This is the father of the slave, chattel slave narrative because... If you ask your parents or your grandparents, if y'all still cool, about how black people were moving before the, the TV show Roots came out, they'll explain to you the social construct of black people in America. And everybody wasn't talking about they was Africans. They were identifying with their indigenous roots. And then Roots came out and it switched the whole shit around. And then everybody was on it. Oh, I'm I'm Chicken George. I'm Fiddler. I'm I'm from the you know what I mean. I'm from the continent. You know, take me home. I'm going back. I mean, niggas never made it back though. You know what I'm saying? They kept missing their flight. All of that. I'm going back. And they ain't no. They ain't make it back. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no exodus. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no exodus. They died right here. Niggas died right on these soils. Right here. They buried right her. You know what I mean? And that that TV show Roots was very heavy as a tool of propaganda. And it began to uproot a lot of people. Indigenous Aboriginal claims to this mineral resource rich land. Okay. That's what happened. A lot of people gave up on this land for a fantasy of a place that they never been. They never was going to go to. You understand? And to be honest with you, a place that really didn't want these niggas because they want to open it. They, they, they just get hip to it. You know, uh, the year of the big return. They wasn't opening up the doors like that. The big return in the 60s and whatnot. And let's not even talk about the failed 
uh, experiment of Liberia that turned into general butt naked in the Civil War. And they was basically genociding Africans were out there genociding African-Americans and chopping them up and eating them on the fucking battlefield. That was the Civil War of of, 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 of bourgeois Negroes who went up in Africa trying to bring bourgeois Negro shit into Africa. I heard the, the white man who played Jesus at that Ghana thing died of pneumonia. Is that true? Is that a fact check? You go to Snoop's and see if the Jesus who they brought out in Africa, they brought some crack to some white man, probably a, a fucking volunteer missionary or something. And they brought that nigga in a church dressed up like Jesus. Then I heard he died. <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody put the juju on his ass. Yeah, all pff, black people, all black people somehow are slaves. I know niggas that don't act like they ever, they, you know what I mean? Like, it's all in the actions, bro. You know what I mean? It, it's either that shit is in your DNA or it's not. You understand what I'm saying? And I know people, it ain't in their DNA. They don't move. They don't, it's not in their DNA, nigga. They did not experience that. That's a fact. It's not in their DNA. It, missed, it, it, it skipped them. You know, shit. That's like saying 20 years from now, 30 years, or 50 years from now, that every nigga was locked up in, in the jail because they throw figures at you. We know that, you know, a lot of niggas is locked up, but not everybody. There's a large group of men who never got arrested. And that's hard to believe, you know, but there was a large group of black men who never had no chains put on. It's hard to believe they was walking around with their nuts hanging out. And just doing what the fuck they wanted to do. Riding up and down Old Town Road. Scalping niggas. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, they even had, they was even bending Beckys. You know what I mean? They was bending Beckys. You know what I'm saying? Because they wanted to. And nobody could tell them anything. Why you think they had to write laws on the books so niggas could stop bending Beckys? They had the fucking slave marriage laws or the... You can't sleep with a white woman in Virginia type shit. Where do you think that came from? You think they just said, we're going to make that because niggas ain't getting pussy? Like, no. <laughs> they had to slow down the motherfucking, uh, you know, it was a lot of, uh, it was a lot of thought. They, it was a lot of hot girl summers back then. There was a lot of hot girl summers back then. One thing that I realized and one thing that I stay true to and I stand by is learned behavior, right? Like I could look at people, how they act now, and I could forecast that nothing is really new under the sun, that there's some level of behavior that has taken place 100 years ago and even 500 years ago. You know what I'm saying? I could tell because it's all DNA, it's genetics. So... The same way that these white chicks, you know, these little Beckys be running around thirsty. You know what I mean? Chasing niggas. Man, they was chasing us in Europe. They came. They was chasing us in the Americas. They was chasing us in South America, Central America, North America, uh, West America, the Caribbean. Hey, don't get it fucked up. It's learnt behavior. You know what I mean? It's because of the superiority of our genetics. And it's shit like that. They got these shooters running up in Walmart writing manifestos like a long, moist-ass letter about how, you know, how you just moist and you just a sucker. You know what I mean? You just a bird-ass nigga who's sitting around on some old worrying about immigration and worrying about everything but your fucking self. You know what I mean? Like, how you going to sit around watching Fox News worrying about what everybody else is doing? You worried about automations. You can't stop the machines. Nigga, it's automated already. You know what I'm saying? You ever been in a factory? It's already automated. So you just, you getting mad or you falling into the propaganda of Fox 5 News or whoever's giving you all of these scare tactics. And I'm speaking mostly to these black fragile niggas, right? Because it's black fragility too. A lot, of, a lot of these niggas is moist and fragile. Believe you me. They be in my inbox. 
You feel me? A lot of them. And I'm talking to these white moist niggas and everybody in between. Because it's not a color thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's a pedigree type of thing. These niggas run in packs. So, the moist niggas, you know what I mean? The niggas with, near, with, 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 with vertebrae missing, meaning that they don't got no backbone. Niggas have half of a vertebrae. You know, these weird ass niggas, you know, they just be sitting around counting other people's money. Worrying about what other people's doing. Trying to fight automation. When that's just simply the law. The Moore's law. It's just the law of technology. It's going to advance. You can't stop the advancement of technology during a technological age. It's like trying to stop information during the age of information. You know what I'm talking about? It's like trying to stop stones during the stone age. Nigga, you just can't do it. You're in the wrong age. You're fighting against a whole age. Your arm's too short. So how would I look like being threatened by automation when we live in the era of automation? No, I'm going to figure out what machine is going to work for me. Because only thing that I hear at automation is that the machines is going to be doing the labor and the sweat equity that a lot of niggas is in motherfucking, um, uh, what's that shit when you get injured on the job? You know what I mean? You think I don't want a machine to work for me? When I make my clothes, I got machines working for me. You understand? When, I, when I'm when i in the studio and I'm recording, there's a machine working for me. When I do the editing on my videos, there's a machine working for me. As I'm speaking to the family right now, live stream around the world, there's a motherfucking machine working for me. So what's so scary about automation? What's so scary about mad Mexicans running up in Mexico? Because, like I say, Colorado, California, that's all Mexico. You fake-ass American-ass niggas who, you know what I'm saying? You fake taxpaying ass oh, this is my land. My grandfather was in Vietnam. Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? You don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. How you gonna tell somebody who is indigenous to a land. You don't even know where you from. You know what I'm saying? Until ancestry DNA lets you know. How you gonna tell a Mexican who it's a fake border and you gonna tell, you gonna, you got the nerve to try to tell, um, you gonna call it a, a Mexican an illegal when nah I, don't, nah, I don't respect that. You know, I'm not gonna be a part of that conversation. To me, that's some sucker shit. You know what I'm saying? You niggas can't even you niggas niggas can't even secure a corner in America. You know what I mean? Niggas can't even secure one acre. But want to talk about with the Mexicans what they got and what they can't, or as if you some cracker, like as if you the cracker. That goes to that massa we sick mentality. You need to shut. You need to sit down and and, and butt out of that conversation because it don't got nothing to do with you. Nigga, they robbed your land too, you bird ass nigga. They done ripped you clean of all of your acreage. Niggas don't have a fucking, uh, 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 niggas don't even have a tree that they own. So, I don't give a fuck what the Mexicans is ravaging in America. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not invested in no crackers America to try to protect it from a Mexican. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not my fight. It's not my fight. I didn't take it from them. The cracker took it from them. So he got to fight. He got to, he's going to have to secure this shit because them niggas, they got, they grew a pair of balls and they said that they want to take it back. And to me, that's gangster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't have a problem with that. I just had a fucking quesadilla earlier in a burrito. I don't have no problem with that. You know, none. Manifest destiny. Do you know about the the Mexican sessions? Hmm. Because I'm gonna read this. All of California, and what later became Colorado, New Mexico. Arizona, 
Nevada, Utah, and parts of others were Mexico. That was Mexico. Mexico was founded by 44 Afro-Mexicans. Niggas with long sombreros and long mustaches. Montezuma, the, 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 the Montezuma and the cities of gold, bro. Mexico. I went to Mexico. Olmec heads. Mexico. I'm not mad at the Mexicans. They don't have no problem with red pill. I was in Cozumel chilling. You know, they came on a bus. They was giving us tortillas. Tortillas, however you pronounce it. You know what I mean? They was telling us about the Omex. All kind of shit. You know? I was asking them where the cartel is at. Because I was, you know, I didn't want to run into no smoke. But they was like, it's, it's not even over here. We're good. You know? So, America, the fall of America, Elijah Muhammad predicted it. You are witnessing it. You're living in these times. You should be comfortable with the fact that this bitch has fallen. If you're not, then God damn it, chicken little, the sky must seem like it's falling on your head. You're going to have an uncomfortable ass life that you're going to live because it's only going to fall from this point, it's only going to get worse. So if you're all invested in the Dixie and the red, white, and blue, and you want to be, uh, 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 you know how the Moors say that they're um, part and parcel, well, you need to, well, don't jump off the ship then, nigga, because it's sinking. The Titanic is going down. You might as well go down with it. All of you G.I. Joe-ass niggas that want to strap up and, and put your life on the line for Uncle Sam, well, go do it then. You know what I'm talking about? Go do it. Because this ship is sinking. This ship is sinking. The emperor has no clothes. This ship is sinking. And the wolves are encroaching from the outside. China, Russia, and a whole bunch of other thirsty niggas. They looking at this shit like, oh, nah, it's time to do them in. You know? So, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. You know, I say fuck them all and we focus on us and we get us right. We we collectively come together and, and get these teachers with these fucking, uh, to be honest with you, these egos that don't even, they're not even qualified to have egos. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just, they got excited because social media came out with followers and, and like buttons but a lot of these leaders, they not even qualified to have egos. They didn't catch, they didn't even kill a fly in a motherfucking, uh, they can't even kill a fly in a motherfucking, uh, in, a, in, a, in a swarm. Like, they can't even catch a fly in a swarm. They didn't bust a grape in a fruit fight. You know what I'm talking about? Niggas ain't roll over no stones. So to have an overblown ego to whereas you don't want to work with other leaders or thought leaders or your people, it's un, niggas is unqualified to even have that stance. There's no nigga building no city or no town in America right now. No Wakanda ass dreams. There's nobody constructing any fucking cities. So every single one of these niggas with chips on their shoulders Need to have a fucking seat. Matter of fact, they need to go do the cucumber challenge. Go suck on a cucumber or something. Because they're holding up progress. All of your thought leaders, these niggas who y'all be massaging and whatnot, they holding up progress. Real talk. With these fake ass fucking egos to where they can't come together and see themselves compromising and sitting down and getting on code. With one manifesto. Niggas don't got manifestos. The white boys got manifestos. I, there's no manifestos in the hood. You know what I'm saying? It's just emails that niggas be writing in secret. Sending, you know, where they, where they be spreading rumors or whatever. I don't, there's no manifestos. It couldn't be a manifesto. There's no unity. There's nobody, no one's on code. There's no, there's no one on code. And to somebody say, we don't need a manifesto. Nigga, what? You better, you need something. You need a constitution or something. Shit. 
You need something. We're not going off of ancestor energy or ancestor vibes. I'm not playing that game. I will not be anywhere in a room with more than 10 niggas if we don't have a manifesto. I'm not doing that. You understand? I'm not doing that. I don't trust I don't trust niggas that much with my life. I'm not doing that. Not this time around. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing that. So if niggas ain't organized, you know, if they not organizing and our organs are rising, then you could miss me. I don't have, you know what I mean? I, I won't, I won't, you will never see me near, near nigga. Cause it's not, uh, my existence is not predicated on standing next to nobody. I stand on my own, you know, and I got enough thorough people that I know that's about coming together and making things happen and putting their ego to the side that I'll just rock with them and let these other niggas drown in the motherfuckers sinking ass ship that they in because it is going down. You know what I'm saying? You know, the motherfucking, the Negro minnow, the, the Gilligan, nigga, like the ships are sinking. Please believe me when I tell you that. So we need a code. We need a manifesto. Not on some shooter shit. Don't get scared at the word manifesto now because white people are using it when they shoot shit up. No, nigga. A manifesto is your motherfucking constitution. It's, it's, it's what you stand for. You know? It's what you stand for. So, you know, people writing manifestos on Twitter and the, the Facebook status all day. <laughs> 400, 240 characters. Motherfuckers, you know, this is what I stand for. This is what I'm about. Da, 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 da. This is why I'm doing things. But that's what needs to really take place. You know. And it needs to be in secret. It don't need to be on social media. If you got a manifesto that they can read on social media, nigga, then you're not doing it right. It's only doing it right. Somebody said Eidos only got energy for Eidos. Well, if Eidos only got energy for Eidos, who are you making millionaires right now? Because you're supposed to get on your one minute millionaire movement. Every week you should make a millionaire. Every fucking week. Every week you should open up an institution. Every fucking week. The numbers, you got enough numbers to do it. Every week, nigga. As you sit around and wait. Every week. You should be copping something. Yeah, shout out Derek Grace, the legend. Every week you should be copping something. Red, are you a real Eidos? You best to believe I'm a fucking Eidos. I'm an American descendant of a fucking sovereign. What are you? Yeah, I'm an Eidos, nigga. I'm an Eidos. I'm an American descendant of a runaway slave. What the fuck are you? Hmm? What are you? Yeah, we got we got we got similar agendas, my nigga. But I can get along with an Eidos, uh, an American descendant of a slave. Y'all niggas is cool with me. You know what I'm saying? We good, but my 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 fight is a little different. These crackers is sitting on my land. These crackers is sitting on my resources, little nigga. And I'm coming in with a sword. And I'm swinging it. Okay? Because I'm getting my land. I'm getting my estate back. I went and saw my estate. Have you saw your estate? Did you fucking... Did you chart out your estate? Did you look at your estate? All of the acreage in your estate? I saw it. This year. And I'm not talking about 40 acres either. I'm talking about an estate. Nigga, you got to Google that if you want to find out what that means. I have an estate. Do you? You could come and chill on the land while you wait for your check. You know what I'm saying? And we good. Like I said, we all got the same. We got agendas. Y'all running in there for a check? I'm running in there for some fucking land that they got, they got, they, that they cheated us out of. Resources. Real estate. Estate, land, shit come from my family. A real fucking, not, not fantasy shit. Real land, my nigga. So, I'm going to go in there clapping too. 
You know what I mean? Don't worry about me. I'm going to run up in Walmart with you. You know what I'm talking about? Because I'm coming for mines. I'm coming for mines. But they got my land. They got my estate, bro. It's this is with my family and whatnot. We put in work for that. Real talk. Real paperwork. Real fucking real life shit. Not no fantasy shit. Not no, oh, let me go to Ancestry.com and try to figure this out. No, nigga. Like my, my last name, nigga. My real last name, Moreland, Thomas. Go and ask about the Thomases on St. Thomas, nigga. Go and, ask the, go and ask about the Thomas family on St. Thomas. And then St. Croix. And then St. John. The same place where Lolita Island is. Or what do they call it? Pedo Island. So I'm a different kind of mad. You know what I mean? I'm a different kind of mad. They worked my ancestors and they took my estate, bro. They worked my ancestors and they robbed us for our estate. And then they built resorts and million dollar fucking houses and, 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 and vacation homes on my family's land. So, yeah, I'm going to dig their eyes out. You know what I'm talking about? And pull their fucking edges and everything. Yeah, I'm coming for... Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm coming for that work. I'm coming for that work. And y'all niggas is so cool with me that I'm giving you all kind of fucking layups. Did you go and do your research on the Doctrine of Discovery? So when you go in a the courtroom, they don't smack you up? When you say, oh, I just want to check... No, did, did, are, are you going in there with the real gun play, nigga? Are you going in there strapped up? Are you strapped in like New Jersey twerk? Are you really going in there with the heavy hitters? Because if you don't go in there, you say you want reparations. If you don't go and, and, and charge the Vatican who wrote the Doctrine of Discovery, the Dumb Deveris, all of these papal bulls that actually put niggas in slavery because there was a slavery before the transatlantic. They were sending niggas up and down in Mississippi. They were sending niggas from America into Europe. They were sending motherfuckers from Europe into other places in Europe. So you got to start there. There's a pope by the name of Alexander the Sixth, and he wrote a doctrine in 1493 to put niggas in chains all around the world. So this shit that happened in 1600s is a fucking offshoot of that. And that's called the doctrine of discovery. And if you go and research that, if you get out your, you know, I hope you ain't, I hope you ain't in your feelings. If you go and do the research on that about the doctrine of discovery and the intercaterra divina, and you go and figure out that the popes of Rome and the crown, the monarchs of Castile, which is now Spain and Portugal, which is called Aragon, they were in cohorts to enslave and rob and pillage and to basically convert into Christians, Africans all around the empire after the Moors fell. And that resulted in what you know now as chattel slavery. Oh, if you go with that smoke, you might have a fight. You might have a fight on your hands. But if you just go in there with the shit that they've been smacking, because the Edo shit, like, news alert, this ain't nothing new. You ever heard of Mama, uh, uh, Queen Mother Moore? You ever heard of N Cobra, nigga? You know what I'm talking about? This is a new, you know, this is a new faction of the of the reparations movement. And it makes it, it's making strides. But guess what, my nigga? Newsflash. When In Cobra and them the other ones came out, nigga, they was making strides too. The fuck you think? This is some new shit that niggas is just talking about? Like, go on Google and put reparations 1960. Nigga, they was having that conversation a long time ago. You 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 just late to the party. You just fucking pulled up. City girl. You know what I mean? You a late twerker. They been doing that since Luke. You know what I'm saying? They was getting it in since Luke. You late. So, 
go and bust your gun, but just know when you bust your gun that you busting the right gun because they got rebuttals for you niggas, meaning that they could clap back. And if they clap back, they could knock your head off your shoulders if you don't go in there with the right paperwork because you're dealing with paper gangsters and they take they take whole countries with a pen. You understand? It's called paper terrorism and they're paper gangsters and they're paper tigers. They will bite your head off with paper. I see niggas, I see niggas get stripped to their underwears with a pen. They took everything off these niggas. Took their home, took their kids, took their bank account with a pen. Somebody said, dude, how you ate those on Jamaica? You talking to me? Ain't no fucking Jamaican nigga. Do I look Jamaican? I don't know if you're talking to me or not, but I don't. I'm not Jamaican, bro. I was born in the Bronx. FYI. Paper genocide, yeah. The shit real. These are paper gangsters. We haven't even had that conversation on how you could get your paper gangster up. How you gonna go into some place where these, I'm talking about they take countries with a pen. You going after them with bravado? What you going after them with? Where's your paperwork? Your paperwork should look like the Encyclopedia Britannica. Nigga, if your paperwork is not that stacked, you don't got paperwork. Niggas is sending out emails and what not thinking they got paperwork. If your paperwork ain't that, if, if you don't have that much on them, you don't got no paperwork. These is gangsters. And I'm not saying it like I'm scared or whatnot or try to put no power in their hand. But when your ass wake up, go down to the fucking courthouse. Just sit in. Just sit in and watch all of these niggas get hung all day, every day. On, just pick a courthouse. Family court. People's court. Criminal court. Supreme court. You know what I'm saying? You pick it. You pick. They they washing niggas all day, every day. They robbing niggas. They taking people. They taking children. They taking clothes. They taking estates. They taking jewelry from niggas. You know what I'm saying? It's all with the pen. It's all with the pen. It's genocide. We were genocided. We were we were we were we were tribes, and then they wrote us as Negroes. Blacks and colors. And then they say that the Indians got massacred. Paper genocide. They say that the Aztecs disappeared. They wrote them niggas from all of those Montezumas to Juan Valdez, nigga. Whoop. Paper gangs, paper genocide. You don't exist anymore. All of these people in the in the Midwest, or uh, uh, Oregon, um, Colorado, all of these aboriginals from the Trail of Tears, paper gangsters, nigga. You're Negroes now. You're colors. You don't exist. You have copper tone, red skin, and whatnot. You're Negroes. You're Africans. You don't exist anymore, nigga. You're from fucking Somalia or something. They just wrote you off. Then you go to Somalia like, honey, I'm home. And them niggas is like. <coughs> you like, what? Who, who speak English over here? Nigga. No, they lied to you. And I'm not going to waste my time, my energy. This shit will have you tired, bro. Just trying to explain obvious shit to, to people over the years. I don't got it in me, bro. I'm, I ain't going to lie to you. It's so much shit. There's movies to be made, nigga. There's music to be made. There's so much things to be made and done. I don't have time. I'm not going to use my youthful years trying to convince people about shit that, you know, they really, uh, I don't even know if they want to know it. I don't want to interrupt nobody from their little fantasies. So, Wakanda forever, my nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Wakanda forever. You know? Until further notice. But I'm going to be focusing on 
tangible shit. You know? Now, I'm not from St. Thomas, weirdo. I'm from the Bronx. And my mama, Mama Pill, she was born in Virginia. And my papa, he was born in the Bronx. But my grandparents from my mother's side, yes, cocksucker, they're from the Virgin Islands. That's where my estate is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Paradise. You know? I'll send you a fucking invite. You could come to the to the island warming when we get it back. But it's just so much things to focus on that, you know, it's um it's a lot of shit to focus on, bro. It's a lot of shit to focus on. And we don't have time to be focused on nothing that's mundane. We don't have time to focus on nothing that's reactionary and emotionally unstable. We got time for that. We really don't. We don't have time for that, bro. We have no time for any of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I heard that there's island cats trying to sabotage Eidos. But like I said before, I fucks with y'all a long way. Don't get it fucked up. Like, I rock with the Eidos. You know what I'm talking about? I love the passion. I love the um, the unwavering. And I wouldn't do anything to sabotage none of my brothers that's on the road to doing what they got to do. What I did say in detail and I'm going to say it again is that I will be more than willing to assist and and aid in any way research wise information wise paper gangster wise I could point you to a group of moors whose pen game is immaculate and you know I, I want I want to see every single one of them win you know what I mean? And that's real talk. That's honest. That's that's coming from my heart. I want them niggas to get their checks. I want I want I want us to win, bro. Straight like that. I want us to win. You know what I'm saying? I want us to win. You know. So anybody that's trying to sabotage the brothers from trying to win, you know, that's not cool. I don't I don't co-sign that. Cause like I said. We running up in the same supreme... <laughs> we running up in the same building, my nigga. We running up in the same place. I promise you. That's a fact. So, you know, I, I come from the old school. My enemy's enemy... Is a comrade. Is an ally. You know what I'm talking about? We in this together. We all we got. I'm going to talk greasy to you because I got an estate, nigga, and you don't. But you got to be cool with that. You know what I'm saying? Because when you get your check, you're going to floss. You know? You're going to try to floss, but I'm going to have my boat by then. It's it's not going to work. So we in this together. When you get your check, you're going to need somewhere to go paradise to, you know what I mean, take your little dots or your boot. Or whatever. And we got the estate. We got a resort. You see how one hand washes the other? You understand? So the information is out there. Yeah, there's some people out there that they act like they don't want to help the Eidos because they feel the arrogance. They feel that they're arrogant and, you know, that they're going to be, the, they, they promote division and stuff like that. Me, on the other hand, I don't see it like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't see it like that. I'm here. I'm playing a long game. You understand? I'm here to play the long game, not the short game. I know down the line, as our brothers and sisters who started this Ado's journey are going to be some of the baddest motherfuckers when it comes to this information. You give it some time. They they're gonna they're gonna be some of the some they're gonna be some sharp ass people coming up out of that movement that are going to elevate the fight. To get the land back. 
to get the resources back. To get the fucking air and the water and the rocks back. You know what I'm saying? That that type of... I like shit like that. That's the type of shit that I like. Eidos is American descendant of slaves. Somebody said, what's Eidos? American descendant of slaves. Those are foundational uh, black Americans, right? FBAs. I was getting that mixed up with the Amazon, the ABF or something. But anyway, that's the... Foundational black Americans and the Ados, you know, and they live amongst the Ados because, you know, is anybody going to talk to your American descendants of runaway slaves? Because they had children, too. What about the Ados? Do they get reps? Okay, but all right. You got sabotaged by a Haitian in 2016. I'm sorry to hear that. Nigga, I got sabotaged by a Hindu Uber driver. You know what I'm saying? Should we be banging on Hindu now? Like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, I, I really enjoyed this conversation with the family. Um, the YouTube video that I did earlier, they got interrupted by, I don't know who, but I, I don't, you know, it just got interrupted. It's whatever. You know what I'm saying? We was on a roll, but that video was up now. If anybody wants to see the replay, that video was up. You can check it out. All right. That's on Note Alleged Media. Melanin Monday 71, hashtag dog days of summer, hashtag white terrorism, hashtag might is right, hashtag manifesto. Alright, hit up the cash app, hit up the PayPal, hit up uh, Kings County for some threads. I know it's back to school season. Uh, we got you covered. Alright, we got you covered for back to school. Um, even for the little ones, we're going to have some stuff for the young gods and the young goddesses. And we're going to have something for the ladies, too. Hey, ladies, how you doing? All right. So, um, kingscounty.bigcartel.com. Uh, money sign, Phil Moreland. Go and get Holy Ghost number two, that album by Cambada and Brother Rich. Uh, that's on blackmagicmusic.com. That's a classic. We have a track on there, track number five. Um, yeah. So, with that being said... Love and light to my Eidos, my Eidors, my Eidok, all right? And all of the family that's out there, be safe, stay dangerous, stay focused, stay woke, stay vigilant, you know what I'm talking about? But most of all, stay black or stay Aboriginal, Indigenous, Copper Tone Complexioned, Moorish Nationals, all right? Peace.